All right, so I'm going to do a short little walkthrough uh, for setting up a character for a presentation in Marmoset. I'm going to try and truncate it as much as possible. It's something that my class has requested a few times. So well, let's get into it. First thing I want to show you is how my textures are set up. Uh, and the texture setup is actually identical for pretty much every character. Uh, the diffuse actually has an alpha channel with if you have a, a cutout for your alpha transparency or whatever, that's where it goes. It goes near alpha agree diffuse. The I have a glow map, which is actually the emissive. It's just the name we use for uh, the emissive map in our engine, so it's labeled glow. But it's the emissive texture that basically makes our character glow in these spots that are indicated. Uh, there is a normal map, which should be pretty self-explanatory at this point, and a specular. And the specular also has in its alpha channel a gloss map. Um, which controls the width of the specularity. Uh, and I also have one other texture that I set up before I get into this, uh, and that is the oh, that is the floor texture. So we'll use this as a floor plane, or to edit our floor plane. And it's just a dark kind of a gray uh, diffuse on, in the RGB. And then the alpha, I have this sort of white hotspot in the center for a fall off. This is basically so I can have my background color defined, but then have a floor plane that isn't just terminated at a hard edge. We want to have a nice soft fall off on our floor plane. You'll see that in action in a minute. So in Marmoset, we are going to open up an OBJ. And I just happen to have one right here of a little Golem Man. And said Golem Man has a number of textures, but we'll talk about the first panel real quick. Um, open Mesh is just going to load your model. Your model. Um, saving the scene as a .t bag, which is so unfortunate name. The name <laughs> <laughs> it just really kind of makes me sad every time I see it. Uh, so you can save the scene, and that's sort of it's gonna that's basically gonna save the camera position, the model rotation, um, the materials that you have assigned to this model, all the material setup, the lights in the scene. Um, it's much like a an, like a Maya file or a Max file. Uh, very similar in that regard. It's just saving all of the outside bubble, the package for everything. Um, there is also a screenshot tool right here. You can actually set the the uh, location you're going to output to and tell it how much bigger than your your screen res you're going to use. Um, so two times for whatever, two to five times. And the super sampling is kind of a quality setting. So um, and there's a button for that. You can do videos. I don't do videos for my portfolio stuff. It's just straight uh, images. Um, a lot of the stuff that we're going to do here in, in here is you need to keep in mind that really the idea here is that we want to have a nice looking uh, portfolio piece. We don't, we're don't. we not really worried too much about um, bastardizing our textures a little bit to work for our engine. It's not dissimilar from doing a render uh, and you know trying to decide Oh, do I render it again because it's going to take me four hours because the foot's in the wrong position? Um, or do I just leave it? Essentially, you always want to re-render because you know, this is the one thing people are going to see. So um, let's go on to the next pan the panel here. Tab will set you across the different panels on the top. Shift tab will tab you, or to send you back the other way. Um, we are going to use the regular Fong environment. Uh, and just start setting our textures up. So diffuse, I'm going to go grab my diffuse texture. So there's that automatically assigns in the viewport. Um, I'm going to grab my normal map and my specular slash gloss. I'm going to assign those. And with the specularity, we need to turn on, use specularity to turn it on. Um, I always leave the specular color at white because I actually use, um, I use a color spec for all the assets that I do for the game anyway. So basically, we want whatever we paint in our specular to be the color that we get to come across in the viewport. So white will let that happen. Um, so you see I have some golds in there and some blues. Uh, so let's go back to our marm set. Um, so we've got that set. Right now I'm going to leave the spec intensity and sharpness and Fresnel alone. You do want to set those, and you want to set them per light set. Um, just to get the, you really want to have the best quality lighting you can for uh, the, basically for, for whatever you're displaying. So in this case, leave it alone for now. Um, if you want to turn on alpha, alpha testing, you'll actually, if you have an alpha mask, um, you can turn up the threshold 
and that will kind of define when it's going to start cutting out. I don't really have any uh, any specularity, or sorry, any uh, cutouts for my um, my model on this particular character, so I'm just going to turn off alpha testing. Um, otherwise, in here, there's the oh, we're going to set the emissive map. That's my glow. So I'll turn that on, uh, and then I'm going to down here. You can see there's an emissive map intensity. It's a multiplier that you can see it starts going over bright at a certain point. I want to have a little bit over bright, but not too much. So let's just go with uh, 0.59, whatever, something like this. It looks fine. Um, kittens attacking the microphone. Come on, guys. <laughs> all right, so that's all set there for now. Let's go to the light panel. Oh, shoot, we'll go to, to uh, we're actually gonna go to view. For now, I'm gonna turn on draw sky box just so you can kind of see what's happening. The image-based lighting basic, essentially is, is uh, a, a light set that is based on this cube map that you see, the skybox here. So where the sun is, is where the, like, that's where the specular um, bright spots are going to come from. And there's going to be a shadow side and a, a highlight side. So you can see if you look across the model, that's where the, hi the highlight's going to come from. See my front side's lit up. Um, hmm. Let's see. Right now, this is all good. The one thing you might have to do, um, depending on how you set up your, your normal map, uh, is set the uh, the Y, which is your green channel. Generally speaking, this can go either way. It can be up or down. So in this case, mine, I need to have inverted. Um, you'll see if I turn it the other, other direction, it gets kind of clunky and bruised. That's because it's not displaying correctly. It's not displaying the normals correctly. So make sure you set that. Per your, per your asset. Um, we also want to turn on our floor plane. So here's my floor plane. Uh, remember I said I used that texture. So I'm going to set the texture by clicking floor texture. And I'm going to grab my floor. And you see how, let's turn off the sky box and give a background color of pink. You can really see what's going on here. That good pink. So you see I've got, now I have a space for my drop shadow to, to, uh, to land on but also I fall off so that I can get whatever color, background color I want to set there. Um, that could be black, it could be you know gray. Generally speaking, I put it somewhere in the mid-range, um, you know, whatever is appropriate to the character. In this case, I'm going to go with that darker gray. Um, so that is general setup. I turned off the skybox. Generally speaking, I don't like the skybox as a display thing. I know a lot of people will have them um, for some of the cooler, like the the foresty things. It makes your character kind of look planted, but um, I think the light is, is consistent and nice enough that you don't re really require that. Uh, so next, oh, if you want to make that floor size bigger, there's actually a size slider. You can see you can drag that as big or small as I want it. I just want to make sure it encompasses that, that drop shadow. Um, and the height is basically you know, where it sits on the model. Um, you can do auto position to start it out and then just change the size to make it correct. The auto position will slap it down to the like, stream on the Z, so like the lowest point on your model on the Z. So if your feet aren't planted perfectly, you, they might not. Your character might be floating a little bit. So keep an eye on that. Um, light is where we set which light we're going to use. I, I like sunlight. Um, there are a few good ones. If you want to tinker around with them, uh, once you set it, you can actually hold Shift and click and drag in your viewport, and that will rotate. It's just doing this sky rotation. Um, you also have the option of kittens on the keyboard. You also have the option of setting the brightness down and using actual lights in the scene. So if I turn the brightness down and just start using um, actual lights, I can do some dramatic lighting or just do like a three point light setup if you want. Um, I actually do really like the quality of the light from the image based lighting. so. I'm just going to stick with that, turn this back to one, uh, and I will go set this back to my sunlight. So that's the lighting panel there. You can set up spotlights with gels, so you can actually get um, a different quality of light on the base, uh, but I'm not going to mess with that. And I don't really necessarily, that's something you guys can play with. Uh, in render, there are only a few things that I'm going to mess with. I don't encourage using a lot of depth of field. Um, I know it looks really cool, but you're trying to sell your art, not the renderer. So 
I guess if, if this was like a really cool video that you were trying to do, use it. I don't really think it looks all that great, um, unless it's a particularly extreme character. You know, setting, the, setting up the depth of field and changing the, the distance. I don't think I'm actually going to be able to set this up very well with the size of my model. Um, yeah, I really honestly, you're trying to sell art, you sell your art, not how nice this renderer can look. So, ouch! <laughs> Sorry, kittens on a rampage. Uh, so I'm going to turn off that. I'm actually going to turn the bokeh size back down to zero so it doesn't blur it out at all. Um, and then the last couple things that you can mess with in here, the, there's post effect presets. You can change them if you want. Generally speaking though, the only thing that I mess with is the sharpen. Um, I do like having a little bit of sharpness on my textures. Uh, so I'm gonna actually set, just noodle with this a little bit. You can see in here, this gets a little bit crunchier. It looks a little more like cement. Uh, you can do that in Photoshop later if you want, but in this case, I'm just gonna use a little bit of extra, extra, extra right here. So other than that, not really all that important. You can change all the controls, basically the same controls you'd have in Photoshop using adjustment layers. You can do that in real time here. So it's, it's nice to look at, but not necessary. Um, also, Bloom can occasionally be a boon, although I will say that it's one of those things that I have a love-hate relationship with. Setting it up, doing it well, is kind of a fickle thing. Uh, so I'm not gonna, you, you can mess with that yourself. Um, the last thing we wanna do is go back to our material and check out our specularity. Let's see if we can make this a little bit more intense. I'm gonna bring the intensity up a little, um, but I'm also gonna make the, it a much sharper specularity. So kind of looking at this gold and just seeing if I can get a little bit more shininess out of it. Remember, we're doing this for the screenshot. So whatever pose, whatever screen direction, like direction we're going, that's where we want it to look good. So I'm um, going to edit the finale a little bit to get some fall off. Um, seems like about there is what I like. You can see the nice spec there. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about setting up for the one shot. You're trying to make a nice looking render uh, to display in your portfolio. This is a great place to do it. Um, when you're done, you can save out your material in the material pa panel here. Just say save as, save mat as, put it in your folder. Um, you can save mesh materials at the same time. And then you can save your uh, tea bag. Bunch of jerks naming things. Ridiculous. So you can save your tea bag. <laughs> I'm, it's never going to get old. Uh, I'm a 12 year old boy. Uh, I'm going to just open up the one that I use. This is actually the setup that I had done for my portfolio. Let me reopen this. So it actually got the, ca the camera set where I actually took the screenshot. Um, Spacebar will hide your UI so you can get a preview of what the shot will look like. But then basically it's just a matter of hitting the button. Take, take, or take shot, F12. And we can open that right up in Photoshop. -y. And you'll see that it does have an alpha channel. That is a cutout. So if you want to control, collect, control select that, you can uh, let me make this a non background layer. So I can actually take that and make a mask on it. And now I can put whatever I want in that background. Put a gradient across it. Um, put some kittens. You could put some kittens in there if you needed kittens. Possibly, you know, baseball man. Uh, you can knock out those home runs if you need to in the background. But that's it. I mean, so now you have a great gradient in the background of your character and a nice render to show off to all of your future and possible, yeah, I lost my train of thought, and show it off to your, your, your uh, prospective employers. So there you go.